Hello ladies and sweaty gamers and welcome to the Navy tutorial. Today we're going to talk about everything you need to win your naval battles. So, uh, we're not going to talk about submarine warfare too much, maybe we'll talk about that in another tutorial. Let's dive right into it. So, first, first step that is very important about a ship, max speed, which is in very, very intricate with um, surface visibility and determines how likely is your ship to be hit. Um, so if you have very slow speed and very high visibility like the super heavy battleship, then you're going to have a very um, high chance to be hit by other ships. If you have very uh, low speed and very uh, very high speed and very low visibility, then you're going to be very much harder to hit. Um, then uh, let's talk about organization and HP, which is the next step that's going to matter. Yeah, it's going to matter here. And that determines for how long your ship can fight um, before it sinks or is unable to shoot. Um, and will retreat. Reliability is a stat that determines uh, how likely is your ship to sustain a critical hit. And next comes light attack, heavy attack, and torpedo attacks. And these are the thing, the three that are gonna matter here and that we're gonna talk about the most. So light attack is a type of attack that is very efficient against light ships and very inefficient against heavy ships and can be put both on heavy and light ships. Heavy attack is a type of attack that is very efficient against heavy ships and very inefficient against light ships and they can be put on heavy ships and light, uh, heavy ships only which those are heavy cruisers, battleships, super heavy battleships and battle cruisers. Um, uh, torpedo attacks torpedo, torpedo attacks are very efficient against capital ships but can only target them if the screening efficiency of the enemy is under 100%. We'll talk about that later. Um, also, torpedoes can only be put on light ships, with those, which those are destroyers and light cruisers. Um, basically, the torpedo attack has a 100% hit uh, targeting chance, but um, uh, it's minus the screening efficiency of the enemy. So if he has 90% screening efficiency, you will have 10% chance of hitting him. If he has 100% screening efficiency, you will have 0% chance of hitting him. And if he has zero, you'll have a hundred percent chance of hitting him. So this is very important. Um, depth charges is how much damage you can do to submarines. Armor um, scales in a way it's a bit more complicated than that, but make it simple. For make it simple here, if you have ninety nine percent of the piercing um, compared to the enemy's armor, then you're almost gonna do um, ninety nine percent of the damage. Almost that. If you have fifty percent. Uh, um, of the enemy's armor in piercing, then you're only gonna do 50% of the damage. Instead of 100 damage, you will you will do only 50. So this is how armor scales. You would get to know that super heavy battleships, for example, are unpierceable by almost any ships in the game, uh, but themselves, uh, and even then, and um, also that, uh, for example, the light cruiser will never pierce a um, heavy cruiser of the same age, for example, if we're talking uh, gun 3 and uh, armor 3. Um, also, heavy cruiser is able to pierce any type of battleship, um, pretty much of the same age. Um, I think this is all for armor. Uh, Anti-air is um, the stat that protects your ship in two ways against planes. In the first way, when a wave is going to come into your ship, it's going to shoot down some planes before they're able to attack. So that's the first way it protects you. And the second way is uh, the planes that are going to attack you are going to do less damage, I guess, because they can't really drop down the payload properly or something. Uh, next comes fuel usage is how much fuel you use. Uh, surface visibility, we already talked about it. Surface detection is how uh, efficient your ship is at doing the patrol mission. We'll talk about that later. Um, sub visibility um, doesn't matter here. We're not going to talk about that today. And sub detection, we're not going to talk too much about that today, but it's how better is the stat, better the subs you're going to be able to spot, uh, especially their engines. Um, Okay, so I think we have talked about everything here. So torpedo attack, as we said, uh, can only hit ships if the screening efficiency of the enemy is under 100%. And we're going to consider here that the screening efficiency of the enemy here is always 100% unless, I don't know, he, he doesn't know what he's doing, right? So we're going to consider here it's always 100% at the start of the battle. To have 100% efficiency at the start of the battle, make sure you have at least, at the very least, three screens per capital ships. So torpedo attack, we can understand that it cannot be used alone. We need to have something else that goes with torpedo attack, right? 
So here, what is uh, so you have you have to have something else, and you have to ha you need to have light attack in particular, right? Because this is what is going to give you um, the opportunity of lowering the screening efficiency of the enemy by taking down the screens, um, um, by taking down his screens. So uh, let's see what's the best between light and heavy attack. Let's make a big duel between those two, and we're gonna accept for now that the best way to um, stack. Um, uh, uh, heavy attack on um, heavy attack is on heavy cruisers. We're gonna accept that for now. Uh, I'm gonna explain that later. And the best way to do uh, light attack on light cruiser is um, light attack is on light cruisers. Um, so basically, here on this fleet, we have all um, level like three researched, so level three guns, level three ships, and all passive buff researched. And uh, we have two fleets which have the exact same production costs. And um, further than that, they have the same production cost for the cruisers and they have the same production cost for the destroyers. So, um, yeah, it's very, um, it's, it's going to be very uh, balanced in, in this matter. Um, so let's check. Did I disable AI? No, I didn't. Um, so this here we have, so a fully stacked heavy attack, heavy cruiser uh, and um, a lot of empty destroyers. Why empty? Because we don't. Uh, we just need them to screen the um, capital ships. Because the, the the cruisers are the best way to stack the attack, and so we just need the the, the screens to be able to screen uh, the capitals against torpedoes, um, uh, torpedo attacks. And what is the UK fleet about? The UK fleet is uh, this, the exact same production cost equivalent of the cruisers in light cruisers this time, but with light attack, so cheaper, so there is more. And also there is um, a lot of more expensive destroyers, I mean 30 of them, so this is why it has less than 100 uh, screens like the other uh, fleet, 100 destroyers I mean, like the other fleet. But it still has um, also um, 55 uh, roach destroyers like the other fleet has, which are destroyers with nothing on them. Uh, just to just to roach and uh, those top D3s are like those so let's see this battle so this is the best combination you could have to fight this fleet and clearly we're gonna understand that the fleet that is fighting against it is not made to fight it let's look at this battle uh, so here we're gonna talk about a few stuff before uh, we look at how this battle is gonna go so there is uh, first the screening efficiency of, uh, of your fleet which is um, the first uh, uh, the first stat that is gonna matter here because this side um, heavy cruisers are protected by those destroyers uh, against those torpedoes, right? So we we are waiting for those destroyers uh, to be get killed by those light guns to be able to kill those heavy cruisers. Uh, so as the efficiency uh, screening efficiency is gonna go down. Uh, also, uh, those heavy cruisers are gonna probably target those, but we said earlier that they are very inefficient at killing them. So this fleet should win as from what we said earlier, right? So let's see that. You can see that this side is going well for now, but the screen efficiency is going down and some heavy cruisers are going to start to get damaged. This side is losing some light cruisers and so losing some attack, but it's not mattering too much for now. Still a lot are in the battle. They are pretty resilient to the heavy attack since they are fast. The screening efficiency keeps going down, more and more heavy cruisers are getting damaged. And torpedo attacks are very, very efficient. They are very strong. Once the screening efficiency is zero, now it's the doom for the heavy cruisers, right? So this is the doom for the heavy cruisers. They're not doing much damage. Now the torpedoes are being very, very efficient against them. It's It's been pretty close, right? But here we can clearly consider that the, the light cruisers won. They rem it, it rem it, it, at the end, uh, they still have 26 light cruiser, which is half of their strength um, at the start. And here there's only one missing, so yeah. Clearly, the light cruisers won in this battle. But now let's see what it's going to do against a fleet that will be better prepared against it. Alright, so here is the exact same fleet, we can see it here. Now let's look at the fleet of the other side. Uh, 
There we go. So here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the um, use the I'm gonna use the light attack heavy cruisers to target the um, light the, the light cruisers of the enemy. So here, so here we have. So in this fleet here we have so 100 empty destroyers. So we we have like the same first fleet that fought the light cruisers, but here we have um, light attack heavy cruisers. So we have only gun one uh, heavy gun one here and only light attack guns here. Um, so this uh, is normally a fleet that should be way better prepared at fighting the enemy's fleet here this time. And why is that? I'm gonna explain you here. So here, what hap What is happening? Here, what is happening is that uh, I don't know why this green efficiency is so low here. Wait, it's forty-four cruisers because they are light attack light cruisers. Okay, even though even though its screening efficiency is very low, because to make it fair, the yeah, I should have put more. Uh, I, there's not three screens per. Uh, for the example of this battle, I should have put more, but actually it's gonna be interesting because I do not have full screen efficiency and there's torpedo on the other side. Let's see who wins here. I think uh, my cruisers are still gonna win because there's just too many of them. Yeah, the production cost, uh, again, on this side, were the same, right? Uh, there was 50 light cruisers and 44 heavy cruisers uh, with light attack. It was the same exact production cost. Uh, I'll show you the template of the heavy cruiser. So here, the heavy cruisers clearly, clearly won. So here, why does that happen is because during the battle, the heavy cruisers, which are um, geared towards light attack, as we showed, uh, are killing the light cruiser, which are screens themselves. So they are sinking during the battle while the heavy cruisers are being protected by their destroyers. And so the attack of one side is going down while the other side is actually going up because of veterancy. They are, they are getting better and better. So this is why uh, this battle ends like that. But now let's... <laughs> Let's actually take the first battle, the first fleet that have been defeated in this video and let's give it another chance, you know, let's give it another chance. So here we're going to see two fleets that we already seen. So the scene that the fleet that just won previously. So the same 44 heavy cruisers, uh, light attack heavy cruisers that we just saw and uh, 100 uh, roach destroyers again. So that's the fleet we just used. And now we're going to check at this fleet, which we already saw, we already seen those 29 heavy cruisers and those 100 road destroyers. Yes, we already seen them because this is the fleet that has been defeated in the first battle. And let's see what happens now. So this time, what do we have? We do, we do have, um, so heavy attack against light attack, but one side is targeting the destroyers and one side is targeting the directly the heavy cruisers. And very quickly, you're gonna understand if you uh, if you if you followed everything I said in this video why Italy is clearly gonna win here because like the previous battle, one side is losing its attack during the battle. We can see this attack is going down so slow right now. Look at it as I unpause. Yeah, it's going down so slow because they are sinking during the battle. While one side is grinding the 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 tank of of one side while I'm attacking directly the you know the. The, uh, the, the, the DPS of the other side. So this is what's happening in this battle again. So we can clearly understand the two mechanics. So the screening efficiency and also the, the screening ratio, uh, how it's important for torpedoes, but also the light, uh, the light heavy combination, how it's important. So basically there's a circle that goes. So heavy gun on heavy cruisers will get beaten by light guns on light cruisers uh, with torpedoes which themselves would get bitten by light, light guns with um, um, light, light guns on heavy cruisers, would themselves would get bitten by heavy guns on heavy cruisers, would themselves would get bitten by light guns on light cruisers with this thing and destroyers, uh, and torpedo destroyers, would themselves would get bitten by light attack. Okay, you got it, I think, all right? I could do this, it's a, it's a circle, right? There's three possibilities and be, it's between these three possibilities. Now, I'm gonna talk about why do I negate, for example, battleships or super heavy battleships? Because um, there is something in vanilla that I forgot in my first video, and this is why I had to remake the video. 
uh, for the people that were here for the first time. Um, in Vanilla, there's one thing that's very important. It's that um, basically heavy cruisers are completely OP um, compared to uh, all heavy, uh, all other heavy ships uh, because of their um, uh, HP stat. So basically, uh, if I use, um, if I look at this uh, heavy attack heavy cruiser, it has 408 HP, which is actually the same as a battleship. If I take a battleship of the same age, uh, which is this one, uh, this one, if I give him um, the best battleship armor and the best gun, right, it has 406 HP. And if I use, if I put more guns here, it's not gonna do like the heavy cruisers and add more HP. It doesn't add more HP. So basically, um, it makes it so um, it, it, it's it's definitely better to do heavy cruisers. Also, for another thing that um, I'm gonna explain um, real quick, um, for for a lot of nation that have the the designer. Wait, I'll, I'll show you the designer later. Uh, but I have a particular designer that does the production cost thing. Um, the production minus 25% and heavy attack minus 25%. This minus 25% heavy attack debuff only happens on um, on heavy ships like battleships and uh, not uh, heavy cruisers. And also the, the thing is the battleship is going to be um, uh, more visible and it's going to be less efficient at uh, dealing heavy attack than uh, heavy cruiser in this case. Um, especially the fact that the HP... The HP buff on the heavy cruiser is so huge, M makes the heavy cruiser just omnipotent uh, against uh, all of the of other heavy ships. The all only good thing of uh, a battleship in vanilla, I would say, is to do uh, anti-air. We'll check about uh, the refits and anti-air later. So, um, so we've seen this battle. Uh, it's been done. We understood what, uh, how the circle of the meta works. You know, it's like. There is not only one thing you can do that's always going to be the best, right? It never works like that. There are ships that are very strong, right? So there's meta templates for sure. And those they are. So we, we, we saw in those. Uh, this water cruiser, I'm going to talk about it uh, later. But we talk about those. Those There's an empty destroyer, very important for just having screening efficiency. The torpedo destroyer to have some torpedo attack. Um, the heavy attack heavy cruiser. The light attack heavy cruiser. The light attack light cruiser. And the spotter light cruiser, and they all have their uh, and, and and they all have their role in vanilla here. I think other ships don't really have their role in vanilla. Super heavy battleships, battleships, any other ships. It's kind of sad. It's very sad to say that. I'm actually so sad to say it, but it's true, right? I've I've been playing mods which have fixed this issue, and I didn't even realize there was still a problem in vanilla. But yeah, this is just how it is. Um. So yeah. Um. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll, I'll, I'd like to be proven wrong about this this battleship thingy, but unfortunately, I, I don't see battleships doing anything in vanilla with this HP buff of the heavy cruiser. The heavy cruiser just becomes omnipotent for me. Um, uh, okay, so once we talk about that, uh, we've shown uh, the multiple designs there is. I think everyone's seen them. Uh, there is also the impact of admirals, which I've talked about in my um, previous video. Uh, you should check out the previous video, but I'll talk about it quickly here. So there's a few traits which are really important, um, which I are again in the previous video talked about how to grind them with um, admiral uh, with uh, naval battles. Uh, so here, big guns expert of course for capital ship attack when you're using heavy cruisers, uh, iron side uh, for capital ship armor, but that that actually doesn't matter in too much in vanilla unfortunately. Um, so. Uh, concealment expert for minus visibility, your ship would be less likely to be hit. Um, fleet protector for more screening efficiency. Um, destroyer leader for less visibility and destroyer, very important. Uh, apart from that, um, I'm, I'm not going to talk about carriers here, but of course carriers are, are nice to have, but carriers are not something you can stack too much, right? It's not like other ships, so I'm not going to talk about carriers too much. Of course, if you have four carriers with the best planes you have on them, it's going to be good, right? Um, I don't exactly know um, what would be the best planes to put on the carrier, so I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, yeah, I usually put mainly naval bombers, and that, that's what the worst of the best for me. Uh, but uh, I remember with, in, in the previous meta, it was completely different, so I, I, I really don't know how about the planes on the, on the, on, on the ship in vanilla. Um, not, let's not talk about that. Before it was fighters, I felt like naval bombers would been, have been stronger lately. Um, 
other than that, I think uh, I've... Okay, Cruiser Captain and Fly Sweater are obviously very nice to have, but usually um, hard to get. Um, yeah, so those are very important um, for the reasons I've said. Um, uh, also, uh, if you have a Lancer, you have more stop to screen penetration, but that doesn't really matter. But you also you have more torpedo cooldown hit chance, uh, which uh, cooldown um, uh, hit chance is really nice. Um, eventually, uh, in in the case of the battle where we use torpedoes, as I showed before. So okay, I think we've been clear on that. Um, so about the research, so uh, it's always good to go for everything tier three, I'd say. Um, since um, since there is um, there is nothing like really to go for, uh, and that if the best thing would be adaptability. So you better well, everything is good to research the tier three. Uh, all the passive buffs are good to get here. All the passive buffs, even for the torpedoes, uh, passive buffs are good to get. Um, I didn't add them this time actually. Um, for this uh, for this example, but th this wasn't the one with the torpedo, so that's why. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's pretty much it um, on the devil doctrine. So if you're doing um, a, a super heavy battleship um, uh, thing, if if you're playing a mod, because there is mods that fix the fact that heavy cruisers are too strong and if you're doing um, 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 something where you want to play with armor the fact of having a high armor and very high um, capital ship attack then you can do um, um, fleet in being otherwise train interdiction is very nice for the um, less visibility and it's very low investment also lowering of visibility of um, of all the ships is very very nice uh, best strike would be nice it can be nice in some cases when you want to pour strike because it gives a lot of um uh extra naval attack in those cases uh so i think that's done um so for for the engagement for your naval for the naval battles we're gonna look at the um, another battle naval battle here it's actually the naval battle which i'm gonna confront um heavy cruisers with heavy attack against uh battleships with heavy attack and we're gonna see that uh, it's equivalent production cost and it's gonna be too close for comfort for the um, for the super heavies. Uh, so yeah, basically the super heavies are gonna lose here, um, and uh, that's that's what confirms for me that the fact that the best things is is actually a heavy attack on heavy cruisers in Vanilla, and there's like pretty much nothing else, even with the best armor you can get uh, to do, uh, and heavy cruisers are always gonna win. This, this is what I feel like. Um, so now the question of um, what is the best to do practically, right? Once you start the game, uh, what is the best to do? So first we're going to talk about the refit, which is the, the next thing that comes. Um, uh, when you start a game, obviously, if you play a major navy nation, you're going to start with a, uh, already a fleet. So um, if you're interested in how to refit, it's, it's pretty easy, right? Most likely you're not gonna want you're not gonna want to refit your destroyers or your submarines. Eventually you can re refit your destroyers for anti-submarine warfare. Um, if you are UK or something and you want to save some production costs. Um, um, and most likely you want to build new destroyers, brand new destroyers with brand new engine. Uh, we say ideally you want to do that. Otherwise you can still use those destroyers if you have really nothing else to use as screen. So how do you do your refits? So basically you click on the ship here. Then you click on the design, um, and once you're here, you click duplicate, you change the ship name, and then you can do uh, the, the cruiser batteries. Uh, change the cruiser, all the cruiser batteries. If you want to do heavy attack, you can do heavy attack. If you want to do light attack, you can do light attack. It, it really, it's not like you, you want to do it, right? We'll talk about that later, but it depends on what you would need to do more than what you want to do, I'd say. Um, and, and, um, and uh, the only thing you need to know about the refits is never change the engine or the armor because this will kill your refit and make it way too costful, right? So never change the engine or the armor. You can change anything here uh, apart from that. Uh, also, you can change light cruisers into heavy cruisers and heavy cruisers into light cruisers if you need. Uh, that's not a problem. That doesn't make the production cost too high. So here I'm going to do a full refit to show you again. 
So I click duplicate here. Uh, I'm gonna change everything. This one I'm gonna make a heavy cruiser, heavy attack, right? And then I'm gonna do a light, light, light cruiser. Now you know what? I'm gonna do a light cruiser from a heavy cruiser and a, a, that's smart. A light cruiser from a heavy and a heavy from a light. So at least you would have seen everything. Uh, here, 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 here. Uh, L one one two. Okay. So up XP. So that's done. So the L one one two. So once that's done, I double click the ship here. I click here. I can refit. Um, next, we can do a light cruiser into a heavy cruiser. That can be good to do. Uh, there, there, there. Alright, that's done. Uh, I'm gonna call it uh, H110 for visibility because it's a 1, uh, 2, 0 actually. Zero. So I know when I click here, you know, when I click here, I, I see which one I click. I know it's the H120. Um, also, I could, when I when I select other ships that I want to refit, if there's one that is exactly the same, I would, um, I could know, you know. So one one here, I know I can refit it. There was one one okay, somewhere, you know. No, there was no one one. But well, I could do this, for example, uh, here, duplicate. Instead of that, I put armor one. And then it becomes a... Uh, L111, just like 111, and there we go. Uh, that would be that would be the light ship. As easy as that. Uh, also for the capital ships, uh, for the battleships, uh, I us you can do heavy attack, but I'm gonna do AA here. It's a very very cheap refit, which you always do. If you have the all purpose guns, you can also put those. If you have better AA guns, better put those also. There. All right, that's the refit done. Um, uh, about the, the spotter cruiser I showed earlier, I'm gonna show you that real quick. Um, so basically with your fleet, you're gonna have, want to have at least one spotter cruiser. Um, having multiple spotter cruisers is uh, always good. So if you uh, lose one, you can always have some more and uh, also having some on your fleet, uh, just in case uh, you need them somewhere around. So here, how am, I, how am I doing this? So basically here, what do we have? We have a British fleet that's hanging on around here. Like the pesky British are trying to invade my 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 old lovely fucking. Um, uh, the British are trying to invade my old lovely uh, Sardinia. So I'm trying to avoid them doing that. I see that there has a very high presence here. So I'm, I'm taking this cruiser, which template I'm going to show for the first time here. The spotter cruiser, which max spotting capabilities. Here you could put the anti-submarine uh, warfare thing, but I said I'm not talking about that today. Um, and so this ship, which goes very fast and has a lot of, oops, not this one, it goes very fast thanks to engine three and no guns on them, almost no guns, um, as low as uh, as a few as we could get um, uh, of guns, so we can get the max speed and the max spotting uh, capabilities. And this is gonna spot the British fleet. Oh, I, I'm gonna deactivate AI. This is gonna spot the British fleet, right? It's gonna tell me exactly what's. What's here? I can also know it's exactly here because apparently it's not on a mission, so it's not moving. And I can now select my main fleet. So this spotting cruiser is on do not engage and never repair because I do not want, I mean, do not repair, never repair. You might want to change that in some cases, but here do never, never engage is very important because I don't want him to actually engage in the battle. I want the other fleet to come and intervene and save him, right? So here I'm going to select the other fleet, put it on strike force in the port that is in range of the naval zone that I want to intervene in. And now he's gonna get out of port and go catch the destroyers and sink the destroyers. So this is how it happens. Um, this is how you do magic. Um, apart from that, I think uh, we're good. I think I've mentioned everything. Um, uh, uh, basically, we were supposed to do this this tutorial in two parts, and I was to, supposed to um, talk about everything. Uh, in two parts but that was ending up to be way too complicated a lot of big people were ending up to be confused i think um and also i have mistook myself on on on, on some part with uh the the heavy cruiser thing the the fact that the heavy cruiser has um very 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 high uh hp in vanilla um compared to to horse basically makes it um something that is um really really strong compared to all other capital ships to my opinion 
and not really worth it. Um, uh, apart from that, uh, of course, using carriers on your fleet will be useful. And um, if there is submarines in the fleet, in the main battle fleet you're having, make sure to have some um, um, some depth charges in your fleet, and you're gonna be all right. Uh, apart from that, um, yeah, the influence of air. Uh, so I'm, I'm talking naval build here, but the influence of air, of course, it's influence. You you don't want to fight under red air, right? You, you want to you want to fight under green air. Uh, there's certain situations um, where you can have the advantage uh, in the air, of course. Also, make sure naval terrain is very interesting. Also, uh, for the different type uh, type of uh, you know uh, heavy guns on heavy attack, with light guns on um, with uh, beaten with light guns on uh, light cruisers, um, heavy guns on heavy attack, uh, heavy attack. Also, there's one thing. There's one thing also that's very important about the whole um, three meta thing: the heavy attack on heavy cruisers beaten by the light attack on light cruisers plus torpedoes beaten by the light attack on heavy cruisers beaten by the heavy attack. Okay, you got it. Uh, those three, th this three thing, this three thing is very. Also, there's I think one thing that's very important to mention here is the um, the fuel gain archipelagos. Um, uh, bonus that you get here uh, it's against against any heavy cruiser it's it has quite a lot of less attack right uh, I, I kind of wanted to mention that because I think it everyone loses positioning here but uh, minus 20 movement minus 20 percent attack minus 20 percent defense uh, is pretty big on the heavy cruiser I would say uh, so I want to mention that because I think that could matter a lot um, if sometimes you you think that yeah it if, if you think you can engage him in this kind of favorable terrain and you're doing a um, you're doing a gun uh, your your enemy is doing a heavy cruiser gun and you can catch him there then good for you right that's what you should do <clears throat> definitely um all right apart from that i think i've said everything um I probably make a few cutouts and uh yeah thank you guys for watching the video um so once again sorry for everyone that saw the previous video sorry for uh, uh making all make you re-watch some stuff of the video and not making a brand new video. I'm really sorry, it came out to be very confusing uh, and making long videos as this uh, on such complicated topics is really not that easy. I thought I would do better the first time. I thought I was super good, but <laughs> you know, sometimes you learn you learn from from what you do and uh, and uh, you learn that uh, it's, <laughs> it's not that easy to make YouTube videos. All right, peace out guys, see you later.